Hello viewers, welcome to this session on Biosafety Part 2. This forms a part of the course MEV 003 Environmental Law and Management which is a part of the program Postgraduate Diploma in Environmental and Occupational Health. I introduce myself as Dr. Sushmita Baska, working at Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. So in the previous session that was Biosafety Part 1, we discussed about the different types of biological hazards and the levels of the hazards like we discussed from the level 1 to level 4 and how pathogenic these microorganisms can be and uh, the various you know health aspects also of these organisms. Now in this session we will discuss about the biosafety cabinets how these organisms have to be uh, when they are cultured or when they are actually grown in the laboratory in the experimental stations what are the safety cabinets and precautions that need to be taken into account then we will also see the uh, some of the genetically modified organisms and the lmos that is a living um, modified organisms then we will also see some of the safety procedures and the safety protocols that have come into place so biological hazards as we all know they differ from all the other kinds of hazards basically because these biological agents they can grow and they can multiply in the host organism causing diseases now you would have often seen sometimes when you have a fungal patch on your skin or in your body you know that will actually grow quite slowly it may take some time for it to be even manifested for you to even see that you know you have some kind of an allergic reaction but in the case of a bacterial agent because that divides by multi, uh, the binary fission so that means it is 2, uh, 4, 8, 16 and so on. So in this case you will see that in 20 minutes itself the bacterial, the microorganisms, the bacterial organisms especially they will grow at a very fast rate. So those of you who have been growing these bacterial organisms in different dilutions in the laboratory you will be very much familiar with how the growth of the organisms whether it is exponential growth and how this occurs. So pathogenic microorganisms, these are something which are a cause of concern for both the human health, for the animal health and also the plant health. So these have the potential that is the pathogenic organisms, they can cause diseases with tremendous economic and environmental consequences. So after this lecture, you will be able to understand the biosafety cabinets, the GMO, the LMOs, both their benefits as well as their concerns and also the biosafety guidelines. Let us now first discuss about the biological safety cabinets. The terms biological safety cabinet and biosafety cabinet, this has been widely used in order to describe a variety of the containment devices and these are equipped with the HEPA filters. We will also see what this HEPA filter means. They are designed to provide the employees and also the workers utmost protection from these biohazardous materials. These terms are only used for those devices that meet the requirements of the class 1, 2 or the 3 specification. We have already discussed about these class specification. The construction pattern, the airflow velocities and their patterns and the exhaust system functions. So depending on these uh, 3, the uh, biosafety cabinets whether they are class 1, class 2 or class 3, they will be classified. So these classification of the biosafety cabinets, now in this flowchart you can see the biological safety cabinet, they can be classified into the three types, class 1, class 2 and the class 3. In this we have type A and type B, under type A we have the type A1 and type A2, under type B we have type B1 and type B2. Now the class 1 biological safety cabinets. This you will be finding in most of the laboratories and they are the most basic design of all the cabinets. So this actually consists of a stream of inward air that is moving into the cabinet and that contains certain aerosols that are generated during the microbiological procedures. Then this will pass through a filtration system that will trap all the airborne particles and the contaminants. Finally in this figure you can see how the clean decontaminated air is exhausted from the cabinet. So hazardous material will not come out of this. The filtration system consists of a pre-filter and a HEPA. HEPA refers to the high efficiency particulate air filters. 
Although these class 1 uh, cabinet, they protect the worker operator and the environment from exposure to the biohazards, it does not prevent the samples being handled in the cabinet from coming into contact with the airborne contaminants that may be present in the room air. Now this is more suitable for the work with the biosafety levels 1, 2 and 3. So we have discussed about the levels 1, 2 and 3 whether they are less pathogenic or they are highly pathogenic and infectious in nature. Class 2 biological safety cabinets. Now in this the stream of inward air is moving into the cabinet and this is known as the inflow. In some of the laboratories you would have seen this uh, design of the biological safety cabinets also. Now this will prevent this inflow will prevent the aerosol generated during the microbiological manipulations to escape through the front opening. The airflow on the class 2 cabinet this flows through the front inlet grill which is near the operator and therefore no unfiltered inflow air enters the work zone of the cabinet. So this is still safer and in this way the sample of the working area is not contaminated by the outside air. Another feature of these cabinets is there is a vertical laminar that is unidirectional HEPA filtered air stream is there which descends downward from the interior of the cabinet. This will continuously flush the cabinet interior of the airborne contaminants and it will protect the samples being handled within the cabinet from contamination and this is known as the downflow. So this cabinet is highly efficient in protecting the employee and the operator who is managing this and the samples that are handled also will be uh, contamination free and it will also protect the environment from exposure to the biohazardous materials. These cabinets are also suitable for work with the microbial agents which are assigned to the biosafety levels 1, 2 and 3. Class 2 type A and in this we have the type A1 and type A2 biosafety cabinets. The class 2 type A biosafety cabinet, this is the most common class 2 cabinet. Now this one it has a common plenum from which 30% of the air is exhausted and 70% of the air is recirculated to the work area as the downflow. We will see in the following figure how this is being demonstrated. Now these cabinets they will exhaust the air directly back to the lab and they may contain positive pressure contaminated plenums. So these cabinets should not be used while using the toxic chemicals as the exhaust HEPA filtration it will remove the aerobone aerosols biohazards but it cannot remove the, uh, the chemical fumes. The class 2 type A1 has a positively pressurized contaminated plenum bordering the ambient environment. So it is less safe when compared to the class 2 type A2 which has a negative pressure surrounding the positively pressurized contaminated plenum. So hence the type A1 design is now considered as an obsolete model. So in this A2 cabinet you will see that 70% of the air from the positive plenum this is recirculated as a downflow and the remaining 30% is discharged to the lab through the exhaust filter. The class 2 type B biosafety cabinets. Now the basic difference between type A and type B cabinet is that the type B cabinets should be operated with an external blower and it will exhaust the air to the external environment through a duct work system. So in all the biosafety cabinets you have seen that their um, the filtration system is one difference that you will see the ductwork system is also important and the air that is uh, flowing the pressure of the uh, air and, and that is also forming an important factor. So in the absence of these external blowers the cabinets internal blower will blow the air and the microbial agents inside the working area through the front opening towards the operators face posing risk and also the biohazards. So the type B cabinets are commonly used when chemicals are used and uh, or the chemicals are involved in the experiments and they provide an increased level of safety when compared to the type A cabinets. So you have seen that in each level and when you are uh, working with a different type of a you know biohazard uh, level then the different type of cabinets are of uh, coming into use. The class 2 type B1 biosafety cabinet. This has a common plenum from which 70% of the air is exhausted and 30% is again recirculated to the work area as the downflow. These cabinets they have an excellent exhaust system that eliminates the recirculation when the work is performed towards the back within the interior of the cabinet. 
the class 2 type B2 biosafety cabinets. Here all the inflow and the downflow air, this is exhausted after the HEPA filtration to the external environment without any recirculation within the cabinet. So these are best suited for the work with the toxic chemicals employed along with the microbiological processes under all circumstances because there is no recirculation of any air which is occurring. So these cabinets are considered to be the safest of all the class 2 biosafety cabinets. The class 3 biological safety cabinets. Now this figure itself from this itself you should understand that these are the most safe and the absolutely safe cabinets which are usually employed when you are dealing with highly hazardous and the most uh, contaminated and the infectious microbiological agents. Now this model it is made up of a welded metal construction and they are designed to be gas tight. The only thing is there are two glove ports where you can put your hands inside in front of the cabinet and then conduct the experiment whatever you want to do. The negative pressure relative to the ambient environment is maintained within the cabinet. On all the class 3 cabinets a supply of the HEPA filtered air helps in protection and also it helps in the cross uh, preventing the cross contamination of the samples. Now the samples are transferred into the cabinet using a pass through unit installed at the side of the work area and these cabinets are suitable for all the microbial agents up to the biosafety level of level 4. Now they are usually used for the most lethal uh, biological organisms or the lethal biohazardous materials and uh, this is providing the utmost safety to the worker and the scientist who is handling these organisms. Coming on to the next part of the lecture and that will deal with the GMO and the LMO. GMO refers to a genetically modified organism and this is an organism whose genetic material has been altered or has been changed using recombinant DNA technology. Now it is the ability to combine the DNA molecules from different sources into one molecule in a test tube. Thus the abilities or the phenotype of the organism or the protein it induces this all can be modified through the modification of its genes. Like for example, we all have you know a different type of a hair color or different type of hair texture, the color of the iris in our eyes or the color of our skin itself. So all these are coming from the genes. Now imagine if these genes are altered or if they can be modified through the modification of the genes, then you will have a different set of the phenotypic or the, uh, the morphological changes that you are finding and sometimes even the protein also that it produces that can also be modified according to this um, technology. So in genetic engineering, the DNA is cut up and the genes can be moved around from one organism to another. And recent advancements have been made in the field of science and technology using genetic engineering as well as biotechnology. So now this biotechnology is a very good field and that is also offering you a lot of advantages and um, a lot of important applications in the field of medicine and in the field of many other sectors also including uh, agriculture and also other uh, important sectors. So now in this case these include the cultivation of genetically modified or the GM crops and they use genetically modified organisms especially the recombinant bacteria and the development of transgenic animal models using the dairy cattle as a bioreactors for producing pharmaceuticals and they will alter the composition of cow's milk for example in order to resemble the human milk. This is just an example. However, the cultivation of the GM crops developed for both the food and the industrial purposes. They are important in the most important in fact in the Indian context. LMO. This refers to a living modified organism. LMO according to the Cartagena protocol on biosafety 2000, it may be defined as any living organism that possesses a novel combination of genetic material obtained through the use of modern biotechnology. Now according to the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity that is CBD Secretariat 2013, the term living modified organism is considered to be functionally the same as genetically modified organism. The benefits and the controversies of the GMOs and the LMOs. So this you might have seen that it was in the media and in the newspapers and uh, people are discussing the benefits and also some of the controversies associated like whether this is safe to consume, whether this is safe to use and what are the allergenic reactions or allergenicity that they produce. Now in the animals, 
if we see the benefits associated with the GMOs, they provide increased resistance, increased productivity, the feed efficiency is better, there is better yield of meat, eggs and also milk. Now in the crops, we find there is increased improvement to the resistance to the disease and the pest and herbicides. Then there is an increased nutrient yield, the stress tolerance is also increased, there is a reduced maturation time and the taste and the quality of the crops that are produced that is also enhanced with this technology. In the environment, it is helping in the conservation of the soil, water and energy and there is better natural waste management, more efficient processing and increased food security for the growing populations. What are the controversies that are associated with the GMOs? This include the access and the intellectual property, domination of the world production by a few companies, there is increased dependence on the industrialized nation by the developing countries, the biopiracy and the foreign exploitation of the natural resources, ethics is also a factor. There is violation of the natural organisms and intrinsic values, then the potential human impact, there could be certain allergens that are associated with this, uh, the transfer of antibiotic resistance markers can also be one potential uh, problems uh, with the health impact. Health and the safety concerns. Now the use of the recombinant DNA technology in the production of the GM food that involves the transfer of the genes from different species into the food producing organism. So the safety of this is not clearly known and they may have the potential to even induce certain toxic effects in the human body. Now what are these toxic effects? So they can be alteration in the nutritional composition. So the genetic modified, the genetically modified crops themselves, they can have an altered nutritional composition which may affect the nutritional status of the consumer. Then the allergenicity potential of the new protein expressed on the trans gene which is inserted into the crops, that is a major food safety concern. Antibiotic resistance, the potential for the gene transfer and some concerns will lie on the transfer uh, of the possible transfer of the genetically modified DNA from the plant to the gut flora of the humans and the animals. So this antibiotic resistance genes that are frequently used as the selection markers in the genetic modification process, they have the potential to adversely affect the therapeutic efficiency of even the antibiotics. Ethical concerns. So there are certain conflicting opinions and ethical concerns that this gene transplantation processes to the germ plasm of the crops. This is violating nature and the uh, ethical concerns and the vegans also on using animal genes in the plants. So this is of concern among the people. And then there is also another problem that how this technique is distinct from plant hybridization, uh, chemically or radioactively induced mutations, cell fusions or synthetic foods. So these are some things which come to our mind uh, when we think about these genetically modified crops. The socio-economic concerns, the use of this genetic engineering for the food and agriculture, this is a major cause of concern in the developed as well as the developing countries. And most of the European Union countries, they are not enthusiastic about the GM foods, but countries like Australia, Canada and USA, they have been promoting it for the agriculture export reasons. Among the developing countries, if we take into account, Argentina and China are quite enthusiastic about these foods and uh, the technology is developed by the private sector companies which can lead to certain reduced competition, monopoly of the profits and exploitation of the farmers. Some other socio-economic concerns will include that the local farmers in the developing countries, they will definitely be affected as imported GM commodities will undercut the local production. So, uh, there can be in increased inequality of the income as the larger farmers, they may take the upper hand. So what are the limitations of the regulatory system in India? Uh, there could be inadequate standards for the risk assessment, instructions on the labeling and packaging of the foods containing the GMOs that is yet to be specified, detailed safeguards as embodied in the Kartigna protocol need to be incorporated, there would be inadequate infrastructure for the risk assessment and the shortage of the skilled personnel in this area. Now we come on to the biosafety guidelines. So we are just touching upon some aspects uh, which we all need to know about this biosafety uh, area. 
The concerns related to the biological safety, they have led to the development of guidelines and also certain regulations in the various countries for research, for the testing and safe use and handling of the biological and the genetically modified foods and their products. So India is one of the earliest countries in order to establish a biosafety system for the regulation of the GMOs. In India, the Environment Protection Act was enacted in 1986 by the Ministry of Environment and Forest for the protection and improvement of the environment. Under this act, the rules for the manufacture, use, import, export and storage of the hazardous microorganisms, genetically engineered organisms or cells 1989. This was notified by the uh, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change through the notification number 621 in the official gazette of the Government of India on December 5th, 1989. So the rules for the manufacture, the use, import and export of the storage of these hazardous microorganisms, the genetically engineered organisms or cells 1989. This is applicable to the manufacture, import and storage of these microorganisms and the gene technological products. All of these come under this. And the rules cover the areas of research as well as the large-scale applications of the GMOs and their products throughout India. The rules also cover the application of the hazardous microorganisms which may not be genetically modified. And all this implementation is done by the Department of Biotechnology DBT and the Ministry of Environment and Forest and the Climate Change. Commercial release of the transgenic crops. BT cotton, you might have heard of this word quite often. So BT cotton is the only transgenic crop that is approved for the commercial cultivation in India. And this BT cotton variety is a genetically modified um, organism cotton variety which produces an insecticide to bollworm. So the technology was used in the cotton crop through genetic engineering techniques for the control of the bollworms that was the major pest and thereby it was reducing the risk of the crop failure. So the different strains of the bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis that produces over 200 different uh, Bt toxins that were harmful to the insects. Finally, this Bt cotton was approved by the Genetic Engineering Approval Committee in India in 2002 in nine cotton growing states, namely Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Haryana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Punjab, Rajasthan and Tamil Nadu after extensive biosafety and the agronomic testing. Then the status of approval of the GM food crops in India, we need to know about this also. The Bt brinjal was one such example. This was a suit of transgenic brinjols created by inserting a crystal protein gene from the soil bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis in the genome of the various brinjol cultivars. The insertion of the gene along with certain other genetic elements such as promoters, terminators and antibiotic resistance marker gene into the brinjol is accomplished using the agrobacterium mediated genetic transformation. So this Bt brinjol has been developed to give resistance against the Lepidopteron insects, in particular the brinjol fruit and the shoot borer that is Leucinodus orbanalis. And the Mycure which is an Indian seed company which was based in Maharashtra, this has developed this Bt brinjol. Large scale field trials of this Bt brinjol is under progress at several locations in our country at the Indian Institute of Vegetable Research that is IIVR the state agricultural universities and also the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Codus Alimentarius Commission. The Codus Alimentarius Commission of the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization set up an ad hoc intergovernmental task force on the food derived from biotechnology in order to develop standards, guidelines and recommendations for the foods that are derived from the biotechnology. Therefore, risk assessment of the GM food which addresses the current safety concerns of the genetically modified food was identified. The Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. Now, this was negotiated under the auspices of the Convention on Biological Diversity in the year 1992 and this protocol provides rules for the safe um, transfer, handling and disposal of the living modified organisms and the genetically modified organisms. The World Trade Organization agreements, this is also an important thing which we need to know and they were mainly involved in establishing rules for the international trade in the GM foods. 
There are two agreements in the WTO and these are applicable to the risk assessment and the labeling of the GM foods. These are the agreements on the sanitary and the phytosanitary measures and the technical barriers to trade. The risk assessment of the GM foods for the trade requirements. This is addressed under the agreement on the sanitary and the phytosanitary measures. So my dear learners, in this session, we have understood about the various types of the biosafety cabinets or the biological safety cabinets. We have seen the uh, class 1, 2 and 3 and which is the safest for the most hazardous uh, biomaterials that we are using uh, in the experiments and also in the scientific stations. We have also understood about the genetically modified organisms and the living modified organisms, their benefits and also certain controversies. We have also seen two case studies of Bt cotton and Bt brinjol and how they came up. Finally, we also saw certain biosafety guidelines and the World Trade Organization agreements which were also involved in establishing certain rules for the international trade in the genetically modified foods. I hope you have had a good understanding of this session. Thank you for your patient listening.